So hello everyone. Uh, <clears throat> uh, my name is Kenji Ose and uh, uh, I present uh, today's NRT package that is uh, developed by uh, a colleague, uh, Loïc Dutrieux. Uh, we are from the GRC and especially from a, a directory uh, dedicated to uh, research on uh, forest topics. And uh, in my team, we uh, are focused on uh, forest disturbances. So if you want uh, more information about the work of uh, GRC on uh, forest, you have two uh, web links uh, on the right. <coughs> so uh, we are interested in forest disturbances because uh, this, uh, those kind of phenomena uh, are increasing uh, in, uh, in Europe. And uh, when we talk about these disturbances, we have uh, many types of, uh, of disturbances. So the most common are anthropogenic. Uh, we saw it uh, this morning with uh, forest management uh, practices or uh, some kind of uh, uh, land cover change like uh, urbanization. We have also uh, abiotic disturbances like uh, wildfire, drought, wind, flooding, uh, and so on. And biotic uh, disturbances caused by insects or other pathogen vectors. <clears throat> so the, this kind of uh, disturbances uh, affect uh, the forest uh, itself, but also uh, uh, all the ecosystem services uh, that society relies on. Uh, first of all, the forest sector, we are, and especially uh, the timber market, but also the tourism sector, and at the scale of the uh, Europe, uh, uh, at the scale of the Europe. Um, it um, yeah, it uh, decreases uh, the ability uh, to reach uh, uh, its climate Excuse climate me. targets. So yes, uh, to um, monitoring the disturbances in forest, uh, we uh, rely on remote sensing uh, technologies with satellite data on analysis. We have uh, <clears throat> already an effective alert system like. Uh, FIS uh, at the scale of Copernicus for uh, tracking uh, fires. On, uh, as well, uh, we have services for uh, uh, logging and monitoring at the global uh, scale with uh, Ansen, for instance, or at uh, the scale of member states with uh, their own uh, information services. But <clears throat> for, some, for some other kind of uh, disturbances, uh, in particular uh, the biotic ones, uh, it's more challenging to uh, to develop a method and to uh, to answer uh, to meet uh, the needs of uh, of the member states. <clears throat> so here I take a, a famous example of the barbital attacks uh, in Europe. So the barbital is a small insect of about five millimeters, but with a uh, huge consequences. Um, it attacks uh, mainly spruce uh, forest, and uh, when it when uh, this outbreak uh, begins, uh, we have uh, mainly five, four uh, stage from green level to uh, for green stage to gray stage, and um, the main problem is to detect early uh, this kind of uh, of attack because. Uh, with the satellite images in natural color composition, when you see the red attack, it's uh, quite easy, but it's too late. And, uh, so we try to <clears throat> find some uh, method based on uh, optical images to um, detect as early as possible to allow uh, rapid intervention, and in particular, sanitary cut. So uh, we have uh, different approaches uh, for monitoring this kind of uh, forest dieback. Uh, we have a lot of remote sensing data uh, with different special resolution, different sensor, and uh, different uh, re revisiting uh, period. And we have also uh, a lot of available methods based on machine learning, deep learning, change detection, between two dates or 
time series analysis. The thing is, uh, if we want to produce a, a monitoring system, alert system, who works on uh, large, who, who that work at larger scales, we need a uh, satellite data with the right uh, resolution, uh, temporal resolution, like Sentinel. So we avoid uh, uh, all the very high resolution data, like uh, I don't know, uh, Playyard on uh, such kind of uh, sensor. Um, and for early, early detection, uh, the best way currently is uh, to use a time series analysis because uh, we uh, we have a, a lack of uh, training data for machine learning approaches. Unfortunately, there are few uh, few tools uh, who use. Uh, uh, time series, uh, satellite images, time series. Uh, we have uh, here two examples of packages, uh, Python packages. The last one for did is uh, maybe the most advanced for monitoring anomalies in a forest. Um, but it's it's a package specialized on uh, the track monitoring of uh, dieback in forest with only one uh, method. So the GRC, two or three years ago, uh, with uh, Loïc Dutrieux, uh, decided to develop uh, a new package called NRT for near real time. Uh, it's uh, based on Python, and um, uh, it's, uh, it aims to be more generic. So uh, uh, it uh, will pro it proposes uh, um, different uh, monitoring algorithms for detecting uh, anomalies on a satellite image time series, and it is uh, optimized for fast computation and scalability. You have uh, an official uh, documentation. It's an official package uh, as well, and um, with uh, short tutorials and examples. Uh, if you want to cite uh, or get in, uh, more information about this tool, there's a paper uh, published in the Journal of Open Source Software. Around this package, we uh, have developed uh, also uh, more precise uh, tutorials. And so you have, a, for example, you have a set of tutorials uh, that present uh, the monitoring of uh, bad beetle attacks on a forest, uh, French forest plot uh, from the uh, downloading of data, the conver uh, conversion into a, a data cube, the optimization of parameters, and the production of a disturbance map. We have also uh, test. Uh, um, the deployment of this uh, package at a large scale. So we here we we took the example of uh, Estonia, and uh, now for one year we monitor every day uh, of every week uh, the the forest in for sorry in Estonia with the NRT package. So um, now uh, I mainly uh, talk about the NRT uh, package. So this is uh, the core package with uh, main monitoring algorithms. Uh, our team developed two more uh, package. One is uh, NRT data, where you can find uh, some test and demonstration data to, to test NRT. And you have... Uh, a new one uh, named um, NRT Validate, uh, where we can, uh, where you can use a temporal uh, accuracy metrics in order to uh, uh, optimize the parameters or to validate your classification. And uh, you have also an interface for visual interpretation uh, in order to um, create uh, reference data based on a. Uh, uh, time series. So this is uh, the interface uh, 
that you can open with uh, NRT validate. Um, so you have a, you can you specify a bounding box, uh, a temporal interval, and you get uh, the time series, and then you can uh, um, uh, label uh, um, the, the images uh, following a segment on, a, on that all. And so at the at the end, you you obtain a, a table that can uh, can a use for for NRT or the kind of uh, research. So the, I, I have an example. I, I will so I will show you later. So for the future uh, <clears throat> future works, um, we are thinking about uh, new packages or maybe uh, I don't know. Um, make a fusion of all the packages in only one. Uh, it's in discussion. Uh, we are also uh, wondering if we uh, work only on uh, univariate uh, time series or if we can uh, introduce a multivariate time series. Um, there are also questions about parameters optimization. And uh, at the end, uh, uh, can we uh, label the anomalies? Because uh, for now, uh, NRT detect anomalies, but we not say if it's a bug beetle attack or a drought or so anything. <clears throat> but NRT package is done for experiments. So uh, uh, I invite you to play with this tool and uh, we are open for to feedbacks and contributions. So demo time. Um, I, um, with Loic, so uh, we develop a uh, we propose you um, a notebook. Uh, there is a, the current version is on the first link, but uh, we will find it uh, easily. And, uh, but at the end, uh, everything will be uh, stored in a, a repository of Loic Dutrio. I propose you to use a uh, Google Colab, but if you prefer, you can use uh, other platform. Uh, CDSC or you own a uh, Jupyter Lab, uh, so uh, now I can uh, we can uh, try together. 